Okay. Hi, I'm Gary. Um, so tonight we're going to attempt to bring through Jimmy. He's one of my guides who works with my physical team. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to him. He's only a dead guy. He's not going to hurt you. Um, what you're getting tonight is his his opinion to your questions. Um, if it differs from your own opinion, that's completely fine. You are completely entitled to believe whatever you want. Uh, you're just getting his opinion. Um, so don't be afraid to talk to him. We'll get through as many as we can in the time. Uh, and then I will be around at the end. If there's anything you need to me to elaborate on, or if you have any questions, we run out of time. I can try my best, um, but otherwise, just enjoy. Um, this isn't a seance. If you need to go to the toilet, go to the toilet. Please don't take us with you. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just kind of enjoy. Um, send your energy. Keep your questions kind of nice and brief. You know, what's the spirit world like rather than 50 years ago, there was this bright light in the sky, three wise men and all that. Um, also, um, keep the questions interesting. You know, if we have 50 people say, can you tell me about my guide? It's going to be very boring for everyone else. Um, so just try and keep it more interesting. What happens when you die? Have you met Jesus? Does he play poker? Does he eat Easter eggs? Whatever that kind of stuff, whatever you're interested in, really. That'll make it more fun for everyone. So um, who wants to start? So on your side of life, you're aware that you have guides and helpers that work with you from my side of life. Now, when you pass over to my side of life, you still have guides and helpers. So wherever you have a desire to still work with, you have the guides and helpers there that would still advise you. So in that way, you progress. Now, a lot of it is beyond the duality of the physical world. So it's different lessons, different experiences you're going to get as you progress within my side of life. But it's still very similar to the learning process you go through within your physical side in that you have those guides and helpers. Jimmy, well, while we just talked about percep uh, uh, perception, perception in the seance room, could you please talk about that? So working with perception is an easy way to work as it requires a lot less energy. Rather than create a mass that every individual can perceive, we could just work with how your mind perceives that energy to show you what we want to show you. Therefore, we could create a mass. You could see your mother and the person next to you could see the father. Because we're still producing the mass, but we're working with how you perceive that energy to show you what we want to show, which requires a lot less energy. So would that mean that uh, what we perceive in our environment, it's always a certain energy. That's the reason we see it like that. So if I would see the mess and there is a certain way I see my mum, you build the energy that way that I can perceive it as my mum? Is there you an easier way? Or your body would pick up and interpret the energy into the way we want it to come across to you. So if we wanted to give you the impression of your mum, we'd employ the energy in a way that your mind would interpret which would then attach to the neurons in the brain, which relate to your mother. And that would bring the memory of the mother or the emotion of the mother, which would then give us the result we were looking for. Uh, Jimmy, the, the, um, the mediumship of this medium you're working with is what is the aim? What is the outcome you are working towards compared to, say, other public mediums? Well, in this team, we're about education. If what we do with this medium, we only did with this medium, we'd be wasting our time. We have to be able to re reproduce what we do with this medium through other mediums, thereby being able to expand that progression there. So we're very much about the education, giving you understanding to your side of, life of how and why things work, who is in control of the energy and what is possible when the harmony is correct. And... So you now also bring forward healing reports and reports. What is the meaning of suddenly everyone is having reports? Why is the spirit world going towards that? What is the benefit? Why are everyone bringing forward supports now? Why is it so prevalent? Now, they are a way of harnessing energy or utilizing energy or activating energy in individual. So, for example, you may be given an object from the world of spirit to harness your healing ability or healing that you need to receive. So often, if you are given an object or in a part, it's got an intention behind it, whether it's for your own benefit, your own development, or to elicit a memory. And so you embed a certain energy for that person. 
in essence, the object in question becomes more of a beacon. Your energy picks up on that beacon and it then replicates or carries out the intention within that beacon. So if we're wanting to say work with your kidneys, the object there would encourage your own energy field to react in a way that would be beneficial to your kidneys. In some cases, yes, there will be damage which would take a while before your medicine and your science fully understands it, or there would be lasting effects because of this. It's not going to be as extreme as many on your side life seem to think, but yes, there will be a factor of that and damage that will still be yet to become known to your side life. Now, that will depend upon the individual there, depending on what type of phenomena you're doing, what skills you're working with, for every skill you have, we'll have a number of guys that will work with you towards that skill. Now, a misconception from your side of life, a guide is somebody who owes you a karmic bond there, energy that needs to be repaid to you. Now, the way they pay that off to you is they work with the physical realm without taking upon themselves a physical form. Once they've paid off what they owe to you, then move on. And these are the guys that will change throughout your life. You then have personalities and entities that work with you who are part of your soul group who wish to help you achieve the lessons that you've set out to achieve within your lifetime and they'll stay with you throughout your life. But every skill you have within your physical life, you'll have a guide or a helper within my side of life working with that. And you may have a team that works with that. Now, another misconception for your side of life, there's many there who go to your churches, go to your mediums and get a message week after week and think themselves so special. And then you have some individuals that never get a message and think that they're forgotten by the spirit world. Now, to that, I'd say the more guide you have or the more messages you get from my side of life means the more help you need. So if you're not getting messages directly from my side of life, it's because you don't need that direct help. Indeed, now, sometimes this can be a misconception of the mind of the medium or the mind of the sitters, where that personality is then created, or the intelligence coming through from my side of life is overshadowed and changed into a way that the minds will understand or accept. Other times we may use a personality which is known to your side of life in order to come through and achieve what it is we want to achieve. Actually, it's often cheaper than using a phone. <laughs> Indeed, the worst that can happen is that your own mind will interfere and you believe the information coming through which is projected by your mind rather than intelligence coming from my side of life. But this isn't just related to boards. This is any faculty you use to work with mediumship or your psychic ability. The mind will always work against you where you allow it to do so. If used properly, though, it can be utilized as a tool to make connection with my side of life. Understand, every decision you make within your life you've chosen to make before you physically incarnate. Now, on the one hand, we are not governed by time like you are. So everything that has occurred or will occur is occurring right now. So when your perception makes those separate moments. However, your higher self has the awareness of why you're making those choices, what it is you set out to learn and how you're going to learn and go through that experience. So it is you who makes the decision, but it's the higher self. Now, Within your side of life, too often you look outwards for answers, or actually you should be looking inwards. You should become aware of that inner voice, which is the spirit working through you, because that's where the true answers lie. Now, for someone on your side of life, having the bond with a name or a personality is required in order for us to achieve what we want to achieve through that medium. However, what is important is one who is in control at the time and who should be in control, as well as how the guide is working through you. Just because you don't know who the guide is doesn't mean they're not achieving what they want to achieve. And even those who don't do mediumship, any skill that's being utilized within your side of life will have a guide and a helper working there. But most of the times you won't be aware of who that is. Sure, yours is the world of duality. You don't realize the one without the other. And indeed, that's the purpose of your side of life, the purpose of your physical sphere, to have that duality, to have those experiences and those learnings that you don't get in what we call the higher realms. Often why you don't remember your past lives or you're not aware physically within the conscious mind of what is to come. Because if you had that knowledge, you wouldn't gain the experience. Now to this, the advice I'd give you, so many of you are worried about your pandemics, about your wars, and that you're going to pass the my side life in some grisly way. To that, I'd advise you there's very simple ways out there that can return you to my side life before any war or any famine or any disease gets you. So indeed, there is a philosophy within your side about living for the moment. And please understand that you are here to learn and you are here to experience. So enjoy that experience. The worst that can happen to you is that you go back to my side of life, which really is not that bad. Indeed, now, as I look down your timeline, 
you have got another pandemic coming up there, which is already in the works, already in the brewing there. Whether you can class it as worse is a matter of perspective. But indeed, yes, you are not done with your pandemics yet. But this way, I say to you to understand that all healing is self-healing. All your mediums and healers on your side life are doing are being facilitated, but it's the individual that allows the healing to occur. So when you want changes to occur, stop looking outwards, turn inwards. Too often in your side life, you're too caught up on the symptoms and to take a tablet to ignore the symptoms rather than take responsibility or sit in the power and get the understanding of why you're manifesting the symptoms in the first place. So there are different faculties in different ways. Indeed, we've spoken there, you could use the ectoplasm to create the mask. Or if you were using purely energy, then we could either work with the perception with how the sitters perceive that energy. So we simply build the energy around the medium's face. We then work with how you pick up that energy to make you see what we want to show you. Or we can work with the lighting and the shadow and the wavelength within the room to create the images we want to do. Indeed, now, when children in our side of life are picking up on my side of life, it's the loved ones around them that they pick it up on. It's the misunderstanding within the physical mind and the natural ability of the form to fear anything it doesn't understand that brings the disharmony or confusion there. So as there's loved ones around you, they have no intention to want to scare you. So if you have that intention that you are scared and you ask them to step back, then they will step back. Now, again, there's a misconception there. Indeed, I can say the pandemics that you've experienced in the moment are not natural in their basis and have had tampering from humans within your side of life. But don't go blaming your government or your elected officials. Often it's your governments behind the governments that are often in control of this. If you understand your governments are very big, there's a lot of different factions. And indeed, often the left hand doesn't understand what the right hand is doing and vice versa. So indeed, yes, I can say the pandemics you've recently experienced are not naturally in their basis, but it also means that they're not intentional and it's not a big conspiracy, as a lot of people on your side seem to believe. Indeed, there will be a lot of life returning to my side life. Due to this, you won't go through your major lockdowns as you previously have, and your economy will not be hit as badly as it has. But in regards to the human health and the human life that is returned to my side of life, in that regard, it will be on par. Now, the best advice I give to this, as it's not an individual basis, is I'd advise all on your side of life to take time to sit in the power. So that's why you take 10 to 15 minutes out of your day to sit, to open up to my side of life, to that inner spark, which is the spirit, and allow us to do the work on your energy there. So then when you come to sit with your groups, we can work on development rather than having to clear the energy that you haven't cleared. Now, for anything to work with your energy, it has to have your permission, consciously and subconsciously. Now, you will only attract that which comes in a bond of love. Entities that have known you for a very long time, even when I work through the medium, I have to go through entities who understand the medium better than they understand themselves. And I have to have their permissions before I'm able to even interact with the energy. So if you had a, an entity out there whose intentions were not good, it would be very hard for them to establish a connection within someone within your side of life. Often this is a misconception or it's what we call a thought form where energy is given the idea of a personality. So I can advise it is not in one piece anymore. I can advise I see it on or it had been on land rather than in the sea, but I can also advise those who are on board and now within my side of life. All personalities, when they return to my side life, will continue to grow as an individual. Now, in time, as you progress, you become aware of your different aspects, the different lives you've lived. You will become that merging, but you'll always retain the individuality. Now, your animal kingdom is no different. It's the human ego that makes mankind think they're any more intelligent or more superior than their animal kingdom. And indeed, when we look at the deeds of mankind compared to your animal kingdom, often we could refer to them as the intelligent ones. Indeed, it's simply a different form with different experiences to learn within your physical sphere. Indeed, my friends, it is a lot better when you return to my side life. The best example I can give you is returning to my side life will make the physical life feel as if you've had a disability. You'll only truly begin to feel like you begin to live once you return to my side life. That said, friends, you are here to learn experiences and lessons. So don't try to rush those lessons.
Now, yours is a world of duality. You'll always have that duality as long as your side of life exists. Indeed, even if you could decide upon one religion, you'd start a war over what to call the religion. So indeed, there'll always be a dividing within your science. Now, on that one, I'm going to return the medium to you and leave you on a cliffhanger there. We speak again, remember the love and society, take it with you. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> there were a couple there were a couple of questions, Gary, that we didn't get through. Would you like to um, have a go at them from your experience? Yeah, sure. Uh, Eileen says, what is the best way to connect with nature spirits? Um, good question. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold, so I have a stand a bit. <laughs> I was decorating and got dust in my throat. Um, so first of all, obviously get into nature. Um, and when it comes to nature, you've got to find what works for you. So some people, it, it's the wood, some people, it's grass, some people, it's the river. Um, so you've got to find really, some people, it could be a beach. So you really got to find when you're connecting with nature, what is going to work for you. Um, so for me, I wouldn't do real well in the forest, but give me water. That'd be great for me. Um, and then meditate, sit in the power, just do it outside. Um, so sit, connect with your energy feel the energy of the water or the sound around you and try to connect with it you right inga yes annoyed okay. but yes okay. <laughs> i said annoyed but yes <laughs> because you couldn't get in okay do you want to ask the questions honey no you go keep going you do a great job <laughs> okay um how do we best help ourselves to enjoy this physical life that's a good question. Uh, the easy answer would be stop worrying. <laughs> Much easier said than done. Um, stop trying to second guess. Um, you know, we spend so much time worrying about things in our head that never happen, uh, or even if they do happen, they're never as bad as we imagine they're going to be. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's the there's no point crying over spilt milk; it's still spilt. Um, so yeah, just try and live for the moment, really. Okay. Does the fundamental Christian interpretation of Jesus' spirit materialization at Easter as bodily resurrection affect the understanding of the afterlife? Gosh. Well, that's a good question. Um, good question. I would probably say no, not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. Um, in essence, it, it's what we see in seances where spirit materialize on a regular basis. It's just it's the Christian interpretation of it, and they've put their spin on it, which is fine um and you know even within the spiritual movement there's there's a lot of groups especially in america who will still work with jesus energy mary energy um so no if anything this is just a time for them to kind of harness and focus their energy for that okay thank you how does the emotional and spiritual state of humanity now compare with centuries past uh so there's a difference i'd say in the western world we've got very lazy We've got very lazy in the sense that even if we look back 100 years, you know, you would have tea and table tipping parties where it would be sociable to get around, sit in the dark um, and, and give an hour to spirit because we didn't have Netflix. Uh, nowadays, we want everything to have happened. You know, we want to sit twice and be able to go out publicly, um, whereas they were happy to put the time and dedication. Also, we look to say the Eastern cultures they would build whole traditions around it. They The whole communities would be built around sitting and things like that. And that's why if we look at places like Brazil who have that kind of old culture, they have things like psychic surgery and stuff like that as, as a common thing for them. Um, whereas in the Western world, we've, just, we've got too impatient. And I think it's because of we're living in such a fast-paced world where we have things like Netflix and stuff like that that we just don't want to put the, the time into it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy would probably give you a much better answer for these, but I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're doing fine. He's just anything? letting us do all the work. Um, yeah, it's been said that he won't answer um, questions that are of a personal nature, but I'll ask anyway. Um, will Gary answer any health questions? I've been experiencing pulsatile tinnitus for a couple of months now and i don't know what it could be uh so to do, do, do to ask Amber about that so i'm getting drawn to the nerves themselves 
um, different causes of tinnitus. So in this case, I'm, I'm seeing the nerves and they look overstimulated, which feels like that's what's bringing on the tinnitus there, overstimulation of the nerves. Okay. For connecting with nature, I love rubbing my hands against trees, feeling the tree bark. I okay. think that's just a statement. That's fine. <laughs> and uh, yeah. somebody else says, yes, I like to commune with trees also. So I think they were both statements. So that ends the questions for you. Okay, yeah. Gary, can you tell us about your upcoming trips? I think you're going to America again. Is that right? Yep, back to America for the Lily Dale event uh, run by Susan there. Um, so we've got that, and then we're doing a little tour around America. Uh, plan to get to Australia at some point, uh, and then we're back up to Switzerland again. Um, I think a couple of other places. It's not as glamorous as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about America? Um, the food. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I like the the energy there. Is it, it's interesting. So, you know, I've never been one that's ever really come across things like ascended masters and stuff like that we don't really have much of that in the uk but it's a very big thing out there uh which is really interesting so when i do my seances there there is a, a lot of ascended masters and stuff coming through which for me is a very new experience um they seem to like try new things out in america which is nice um so every time we go there you know last time we were there we were getting full materialization and light um so hopefully they'll continue doing that they start the precipitations there Hopefully they'll do some more of that would be nice and what do your guides think about being in Lilydale? Do they make any comments about that? The historical um, aspects of spiritualism? Probably. <laughs> uh, no one's told me that's the problem. Uh, I had to hear things third hand. They seem to like it. There's a reason, obviously, why they keep bringing me out there. Um, and obviously, it's, it's where precipitation happened and it's where it started for me. Um, so there's definitely the energy there. But again, we've got like like we've got England in the western world there's a lot of misunderstanding as well we have a lot of people who don't understand um you know Lily Dell they're not a huge fan of physical so it's great that Susan's trying to bring it back there which you know it's the basis of spiritualism um so there's a lot of re-education that, that's needed in, in the western world Fantastic. Susan, do you want to give everybody just a brief uh, introduction to what's going to happen there at Lilydale, the dates, and do a little bit of promotion on that? I'm just going to oh, add a pin. That would be very nice. Thank you. Yes, we are doing a physical mediumship conference in Lilydale, June 18th to the 23rd. Um, the idea was to bring physical mediumship back. And as part of this, I personally have been doing research on all of the people that have done physical mediumship here in the past, and I found at least 40 mediums. Um, I won't be able to get files on all of them because the information just doesn't exist. Nobody has researched them. Nobody has put them together in any kind of form, or the museum doesn't even have all of the, the bios of all of these people. I had to find the names by looking at photographs in, in the museum. So yes, we're going we're gonna to honor the physical mediums from the past in Lilydale. So I'm sure that their spirit will be with us when, we're, when Gary's doing his work and Michael's doing his work. We have Michael um, Shane coming. We have, of course, Gary coming. And we have um, Bill Bolt, who is a fairly new physical medium who's going to be doing workshops for us outside we have got workshops going in addition to the physical mediums we got workshops going on on precipitation i found the old um book by um what am i blanking on keeler keeler's book on how to do slate writing so we will be doing slate writing and precipitation experiments and we will be doing energy experiments and we'll be doing lots of other trans Winterbrook's going to be with us. She's going to be doing transfiguration and all kinds of things. So the tutors right now are Julie Adriani, who's also a physical medium, Winterbrook, who's a physical medium, and myself, who dabbles in physical mediumship, are going to be the tutors. So it is a four-day event, five-day event, actually, of all things physical. So 
I'm very excited. I am offering one day passes for people in the area here, um, especially in Bill's area from Rochester. Some want to come for the day. And there are a few options now. I am trying to do an online thing. The online thing is with Michael um, at this point. Yeah. So. Fantastic, fantastic. So what's the attitude of the people in Lilydale to physical mediumship? To, I mean, are you well, getting any flack against this? And why is there flack against physical? Uh, well, there, I think there was flack because of, I, I keep thinking it was a lot of it had to do past time with all the, ca the, the fraud stuff they had. I mean, there, there, what happened was they came in here about the time of Houdini and Kerrigan, they came in, there was a scathing article in the New York Times about fraud in Lilydale. Um, some of the mediums were tested by the Lilydale Assembly afterwards. And I think just because there was so much controversy over fraudulent behavior that they totally steered away from the physical. However, I have found the people that were continuing to do physical mediumship in Lilydale throughout all of these intervening years. They just didn't advertise it. But mm -hmm. I know who a lot of those people were who were doing it. Um, one I know is still alive. So people were always doing physical mediumship. They just, it just wasn't in the assembly. In the old days, they were doing physical mediumship in the assembly hall, you know. Yeah, they were doing it in the assembly hall, Gary. And um, they they were advertising it all, all the time. And uh, now it's it's just turned into mental mediumship. But they were also scared. It was the SNU. They had the whole SNU thing with um, about not doing dark seances because they wouldn't let the cameras in with Scott Milligan, that whole mess. And that there were some people, SNU people that came to Lilydale and pounded into Lilydale's head. They couldn't do dark seances and this, that, and the other thing. But there's also some question of insurance with the dark seances. So I came in, I said, okay, well, physical mediumship isn't just dark seances. So we're doing the dark seances at Neil's house, um, which people have the option of, of taking or not. He's doing a discounted pri price for a conference attendees. So we will have dark seances at Neil's. And we're doing everything in the light here. We're doing the apports. We're doing the um, apports and, well, I'll be doing some scrying. We're doing all the stuff, the transfiguration, the trance, all of that that's done in a red light or some light, um, billets, all of that, which is all part of physical mediumship, which is what people seem to have forgotten. Mm -hmm. That's great. Gary, how, how does it affect you? How much are you working in light now? I mean, and does that affect you? Um, I think the majority of our seances now tend to be in light. Uh, there are still some periods throughout where, where it's dark, but yeah, the majority of it. I said so in, in America last time we were getting full materialization in, in this light that I'm in now, this bright. We had full materializations walking around the room with four seances. Um, so yeah, I'd say the majority of it is in light. Definitely takes it out of me. Um, like, you know, I got from the last time I was in America, I got a bad chest from, from all the sittings and that's been what, four or five weeks and my chest is still a bit bad from that. Um, so it definitely takes it out of me, but, uh, still alive, still ticking, but <laughs> physical does put a lot of stress on people's body. So, um, what, what's it like for you when, when you are doing a, a, a physical science, are you conscious of anything or are you totally unconscious and where are you? No. So <clears throat> the last thing I tend to remember is doing my pre-seance talk or, or parts of the pre-seance talk. Um, I then know that time has passed um, and then I'm fully conscious afterwards, but come the next day, I can remember pieces of after the seance. So I remember nothing during the seance. Um, I can normally remember doing a bit of the pre-seance talk and then little bits afterwards, but I've had after seances where I all have full conversations with people and then come the next day, I can forget I've even met them. <laughs> and how much are you aware? Like when you were in trance with, with Jimmy just recently, just now, 
how much are you aware and what are you aware of? So I'm aware of time passing. Uh, I'm aware that I probably wasn't as deep as I normally would go. And that's probably just because I'm very congested. Um, but what was said or how long it was, I don't know. Oh, I can always look at the clock now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's, it's like, it's a bit like daydreaming when you've daydreamed for a while and then someone snaps you out of the daydream. You don't know how long you were daydreaming before, but you know you were daydreaming the time has passed, but wasn't really aware of what happened during that time. And tell us, are you doing healing, individual healing sessions for people? And how does that, how do people get in touch with you if they want healing? Yeah, so I've got clinics all over if you want to see me in person. Uh, we also do a lot of work uh, absently. So we would uh, set up a time and date. We'd have a chat like this. Um, I then go do the treatment. And then I'd write up everything that we worked on that we picked up and send that across to you for you to read and digest. Um, and then if you've got any questions, you can come back to me. Um, the quickest, probably easiest way to get a hold of me is through Facebook. Um, at, at the moment, it's probably the quickest way to get a hold of me. Um, I also post a load of free stuff and like free talks and stuff on, on Facebook every now and then. Um, like this, I will post this on my Facebook office as well. If people want to watch again on YouTube. Um, so yeah, it's probably the quickest and easiest way to get a hold of me if you're interested in healing. 